We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Austin? Hey, Austin. Doing good, Jared. Hello. How are you? Um, always nice to fill in for Kyle. Um, imagine having a life. Can't couldn't be me. <laughs> uh, you you know sometimes it's a life, but sometimes it's work. Does work mm. count as life? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I I disagree. Happy to be here. Yeah. All right, uh, we're here to do collegiate chaos. Uh, we did sloop, or uh, we did scarlet and grade right after the game finished, which is why Kyle was able to join us for that. But uh, he had to leave super early Sunday morning, so he was not able to join us uh, for collegiate chaos. So uh, we are here doing collegiate chaos a little bit later, and best time for all recordings what right after the game, maybe. It, it was it was a fun so, change up. That was that's what we were worried about before the before the recording was. Imagine we lose that game. <laughs> the feet, yeah. the amount of sadness that will come through the screen. Yeah, cause, yeah, because we we knew right away we we're going to have to do it, and it was going to not be a fun recording had we lost. But anyway, if you want to hear Kyle and I talk about the Ohio State Penn State game, make sure to check out the Monday episode. We're here to talk about all the other games today. Um, where where would you like to start, Austin? I mean. Where should everyone start? The Iowa game. Sure. Uh, Iowa loses to Minnesota in Iowa for the first time since 1999. Yeah. Um, and the end of that game was a show, if you will. Yeah. It's uh, that's a tough way to lose. It, Iowa looks like they about. They were about to win in one of the most, yes, a shit show. One, not, not one, a shit show, but a shit show, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the most possible Iowa ways of winning, which was causing Special a games. quick punt that they then returned that punt for a touchdown. But because the punter waved players off of a free ball, and then he picked up the free ball that they counted that as a fair catch. fair catch signal. But they also didn't penalize him because it wasn't a fair catch signal. But also it was kind of a fair catch. I, I don't understand. The, the the referee in the booth seemed to think it made sense. Um, was it above the head? No, it wasn't. That's it the thing. Not. That's why it wasn't. That's why they didn't penalize him for like a, an improper Indeed. fair catch. Yeah. But yeah, apparently it, it, because it, he was waving the ball off, that that means that it's kind of a fair catch signal, but they didn't penalize him, but they didn't let him return it either. I mean, they let him return it, but they took it, take, took it away later. It, he, he did the, uh, if you've ever played football, he did the old, the old, Peter poison the ball, Peter, like, yeah, poison, yeah, whatever you want to call it. And it, it wasn't over his head at all. It was just, but the, and the Iowa fans um, were not pleased and threw stuff on the field, but that was um, a little bit of chaos for us with the, the first uh, ranked team to go down against a non-ranked team this week. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Tennessee. Yeah loses to Alabama. Uh, it not a chaos scenario at all. Bama being higher ranked, but it, it looked like it was going the other way during the first half. This was a, 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 a you know, quote unquote tale of two half. I hate that, but yeah, it, a game the, it was just Tennessee looked to be dominating that football game through the first half. And then, uh, Old school Bama came out of the locker room in the second half. Yeah, Bama realized that they could just run the ball and it would work. Um, yeah, and it was it was twenty to six at halftime, um, and I mean Bama just poured it on there at the end. Um, what was the final of that one? I think it was like thirty four to 20. twenty. Yeah, and so Bama ends up scoring four touchdowns in the second half, and Tennessee just doesn't score at all. Uh, I think Milton got a little banged up. Uh, he, he's not the most accurate passer. He was running it really well in the first half. Um, 
just be careful with Bama because you never know with them in you know in the Saban era they they get one loss and then they if they run the table the rest of the season they still definitely control their own destiny get to the SEC championship beat Georgia like they've they've got a shot there now they're not the best team this year I don't think no. uh, but no one's really the best team this year and so if Bama can get past LSU and get past Auburn like there's definitely still a shot yeah um, I, I you'd be a fool to rule out Saban. And, and Bama from the playoff. And it's not because, you know, Stuart down here in the chat says Bama honestly stinks. Yeah. And like by Bama standards, yeah, this is not a good Bama team. Luckily for Bama, there's there are no dominant football team. I mean, Kyle and I have been saying it for weeks now. No one's great. Everyone bleeds. No one. Everyone has a flaw. And I, I, Bama actually has, funny enough, the sort of opposite problem that Ohio State has, which is that they have a pretty good offensive line. They're starting Proctor, the freshman, true freshman offensive tackle, but their offensive line is pretty good. They don't have the quarterback. It, and as much as people want to say things about McCord and all of that, like Ohio State has the quarterback. They just don't have the line to really produce right now. And Bama has the sort of opposite problem. I, I don't like Alabama's line at all right now. Um, I, I think... I think their problem is almost their offensive line problems are both there as Ohio State's, but almost like in a different way, whereas Ohio State has a bunch of guys who've stuck around. Um, meanwhile, Bama is playing a lot of young guys. Yeah. And. Yeah, I, I will know Saban's done when Saban says he's done. Saban's done before <laughs> Alabama comes to Columbus. Yeah, that, that that's Jared that's established. That that's established. Uh, let's take a look at another game here, Jared. Uh, Oklahoma survives UCF yeah. 31 29. Yeah, this is a 50, 50, a, a 500 UCF team. This is not your older brother's UCF national title claiming football team. Um, they were favored by like 19 points in this game. And it went down to the wire, like all honesty, very much went down to the wire. Uh, they only win by two points. Um, not not a great outing for the Sooners, because, as I've said, nobody's great. Everyone bleeds. The The good thing for Oklahoma and for all of the undefeated teams remaining that aren't Ohio State and Michigan is they're the only undefeated teams left in their conferences. And if they win out they're more than likely going to make the playoffs. Now, obviously that can't be true if all five conferences have a team that wins out, but odds are one of those teams is going to drop. And so as long as Oklahoma keeps winning, they're going to be fine. Um, and, you know, this was after the Texas game. And so it was a little bit of a letdown game and you kind of sleepwalk into it. But, you know, Dylan Gabriel is good enough to make you make up for some of the mistakes that the rest of his team is making. He's also very experienced. Um, and, you know, UCF had a chance to tie it with the two point conversion at the end of the game. And, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Chop Daddy asked, do two Big Ten teams make the playoffs? Find out when we go to the rankings in just a second. Yeah, I, I would say very possible. Um, yeah, I would say so. Zach says, uh, talking about Oklahoma, like the Cincinnati game. That's a valid point. This is the second time Oklahoma's done this this season where they've been. Yeah, it, it feels like they're a team that a lot of a lot of teams are like this that they play to the level of their competition. Yeah. Uh, that, that that when they play a team like Texas and they're in the cotton bowl and things are really palpable in there and they, they're playing to their highest level. They're a team that can beat just about anybody. And then when they go play a team like UCF or Cincinnati, who's not as good, they can't get as gassed up and as geared up for the game. Is Ohio, uh, uh, Zach, or not Zach Stewart asks, is Ohio state number one in the first college football rankings? When, when are the first official ones? Uh, it's not this upcoming week. I don't believe it would be the next uh, week. So it's like usually the first week of November. So I guess it would be after the next set of games because uh, usually Ohio State has played eight games by the time that you get the rankings. Yeah, so a week and a half. So it'll be after this weekend's games. Coming well, up. by the time this episode actually comes out, it'll be a week, one week. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, the I, I think Ohio State. I mean, we'll talk about we'll talk about that when we get to the graph. Um 
North Carolina loses to Virginia in the most surprising outcome of the weekend, I would say. Um, Virginia is a I, people need to understand that Virginia is a terrible football team. Oh, real bad. You know, and, and I really don't know if there's much of an explanation as to why UNC lost this game. I can't really. I mean, they just they just straight up lost it. I'm, I mean, what do you? It was thirty-one twenty-seven. Like it's not like the defense played completely terrible or the offense played completely terrible. They just kind of just dropped the ball at the end of the game and couldn't find a way to win. I would argue that the defense played completely terrible considering the competition. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, I, I I don't. Yeah. It not a not a great weekend in the Raleigh Durham area for sure. If, I have no if, idea what NC state does, but who, who honestly cares about <laughs> NC state at this point? If, if Drake may can score you 27 points against the Virginia team, you're, you're thinking you uh, have a, a shot to win that game. And uh, I would agree. Zach says, how about them Canes? Um, yeah. Miami beats Clemson. We don't really care. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It's the best. It, it's just like, eh, Clemson lost another game. Meh. Whatever the the absolute height of Clemson, like the the either the beginning of the end for Clemson was whenever Davo ranked Ohio State eleventh, and everything was downhill from there. We we well, like many teams, I believe we broke them in in twenty twenty Miami fashion. Funny enough, not exclusive to Miami. There's a long list of broken teams out there. <laughs> um, Jared Texas survives Houston thirty one twenty four. Uh, this is another nail biter in the Big Twelve. Um, yeah, it's it's um, it came another game down to the wire. Um, Houston had a Houston was a was a was a spot away, a, a real questionable spot away Very from winning. You know, well, not winning, but being in position to win the game. Um, yeah, they probably go for if, two if they score. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's not like, you know, if, if if anyone didn't see, there was a first down that was that occurred on the field that was not reft on the field, in my opinion. Um, now, Houston still would have had to get the touchdown and Houston still would have had a extra point after that. So. You know, I, I don't I don't want to say. You know, because they, they, they had to get two, just to tie it, and then that would have taken you to overtime. Um, yes, Quinn yeah. got hurt. Um, that obviously plays into, uh, you know, <laughs> Texas not performing all that well. Yeah, but I mean, you, you still expect Texas to win without him. I mean, their backup quarterbacks are good enough to, you would hope, close up the game. For, and at the end of the day, they did win. Um, and, and some other teams that won, Jared, just to touch on them, because we've been, we don't need to go completely into their games, but Liberty, Air Force, and James Madison all stay undefeated. Yep. Somewhat noteworthy. Um, and then Oregon uh, was in a pretty good game with Washington State there for a while. They end up pulling away a little bit at the end and they win 38, 24. Uh, Tulsa, excuse me, not Tulsa Tulane beats North Texas by a touchdown. Who was the quarterback that kept Manning on the sidelines? I forget his name, but here, here, here's what you have to remember about Archie Manning. He played very small high school football. Um, he's not ready. That's um, the back of quarterback for, is Malik Murphy. Malik Murphy. There you go. So I, I don't think he's keeping Archie on the sideline. I, I think Archie just isn't ready yet. I, I, you know, I know he, I know his last name's Manning. I, I get it, but. And, and he'll, like, be, he'll be fine. He'll be good. But yeah, 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 yeah. For, I mean, yeah. He's like I said, he I mean, played Quinn's very small year. high school football. It's yeah. he's not ready. I'm not sure why Malik Murphy sounds familiar to you. Um, Ole Miss beats Auburn 28-21. It was a game going into the fourth quarter. Ole Miss scored a late touchdown to kind of put it out of reach. Auburn gets another touchdown to 
make it a one-score game, but almost got a little bit of chaos there. Uh, that's your 12th-ranked Rebels, by the way, um, almost losing to Auburn. So Auburn's going to eventually play spoiler against somebody. They almost did it against Georgia. They almost did it against Ole Miss. They, is, is they Auburn, got a shot to really beat somebody. Is Auburn, like, remember when Nebraska, was it two years ago, where they almost beat everybody? One they, score games, yeah. Yeah, where all, all, all of their games except one were lost by a single score. Um, but they just kept losing, earning themselves the title of the best whatever record I, I team believe, they were of all time. I believe the only game that Nebraska lost that season that was by more than one score was against Ohio State, and they lost by nine. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's very that's it feels like what Auburn's putting together this year. And I mean, eventually they're going to win one of those games because they're they're better than that Nebraska team. <laughs> and the SEC is not that good this year. Yeah, that that's the other thing. You'd almost feel bad for Auburn, except that the SEC is very down this year. So it yeah. it almost feels like it's a missed opportunity for them more than it is. It's not a it's not a Penn State situation, I guess, is my point where. If if you if you were a better person than I am, you'd almost start to feel bad for Penn State because they've had some really good teams, but they just haven't been able to beat Ohio State or Michigan in a consistent enough manner to, you know, make the playoffs. Um, and it's just you know they 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 will have the opportunity starting. We offered him in nineteen. That's why. There you go. Oh, there you go. Um, um what other Stuart game? with um, the recruiting memory. Yeah. Uh, Michigan beats Michigan State 49 nothing. Great. They still haven't played anybody. Um, Florida State knocks off Duke in the other ranked on rank game that week, uh, last week. It was 38 to 20. But that, I feel like that doesn't really tell the story of the game. No. Um, they uh, lost Leonard, the uh, quarterback, Duke. Again. Um, again. Um, had he stayed in the game, it could have it played out good. differently. Uh, the game was still very close at that time. He goes out, and then Duke just didn't have any offense anymore after that. Yeah, um, they've got a they've got a pretty good running back, but I mean, it, it's hard to when your backup quarterback when the drop off is that huge. I mean, it, it it feels like a few years ago since I mean this is an Ohio State podcast when we had Fields, and then the backup was Chuganov. That that yeah. feels like what they're it, now obviously. I'm not saying Riley Leonard is Justin Fields, but I the oh, yeah. is similar where your starting quarterback is really good and your backup quarterback is just like, he's okay. But when you're playing the fourth ranked team in the country, okay is not going to cut it. Um, if he plays the whole game, it's probably a different story, but unfortunately he gets knocked out um, just nagging injuries, but he's, he's a heck of a ball player. So I'm hoping to see him back this season or maybe next um, Can we beat Sparty 69 nothing is the night game versus Michigan State going to be epic? Uh, I'm going to say no to both of those. Could Ohio State okay. shut out Sparty? Yeah, um, I, I don't think that. I, I don't see Day putting up that many points on Michigan Nor State. He I mean, yeah, he, he wants in, in those type of games, he's going to be trying to get the running game going. Um yeah, it's going to be a work on the running game, don't show anything off sort of game. Ohio State is at this point just building up to the game against Michigan. Yeah. I mean, we're past Penn State, we're past Notre Dame. We're just building up to that game. Um, yeah. Speaking of building up to games, I'm sure. Let's that, not look uh, too US... far past Wisconsin, though. No. Yeah. The Wisconsin, they, they have the. They're good enough that you can't problems. screw around. Yeah. Um, Jared. Uh, speaking of not screwing around, Utah beats USC yeah. again, 34-32 yeah. yeah. with the last second field goal. Utah owns USC. Yeah, it's the third straight win for Utah over USC. In heartbreaking uh, fashion. Yeah. A, a, late, US a late turnover by Caleb Williams. A huge punt return for USC. Looks like it's going to put it away. Utah drives the length of the field, kicks a field goal, and wins by two. Um, yes, Caleb Williams is mid. I've been saying it all along. Um, wait till you get to the the chart where you see what Kyle had to say about USC. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, are we ready to jump to the chart? 
Um, yeah, just real quick. Washington uh, beat Arizona State 15 to 7. I, yeah, is, peculiar. Yeah, I yeah, just, just wanted to touch on that one as we uh, get into the chart. But yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's get into the rankings. Zachariah Branch should have been a Buckeye. Should have been. All right, let's jump to the rankings. I am all off center here. That's okay. We fix it. We fix it. Yeah, we're still off center, but we roll. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I can do this on the fly. Nope. That, that's just going to make things work. Okay. We're not worried about that. We're just going to be off center. It's fine. Um, I know, but it, that 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 really hurts a certain part of my brain for it not to be on center. <laughs> but I'm just yeah. I'm going to waste everyone's time if I try and fix it. Um, Washington. OK, current S tier. If you're new here. Only four teams are allowed in S tier. It is our de facto. Um, playoff s- oh, selection. Um, so. That that is where we put the. Uh, that's where we put our top four teams. We do put those teams in order. Um, the next tier are the teams that are just outside of the playoff picture. Um, the next tier are, uh, that would be a tier. Then the next tier, which is B tier, uh, are teams that we think have an outside possibility a long shot outside possibility to maybe get into the playoffs or at least like one of the proper new year's day, you know, bowl games, new year's six bowl games. That's what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't think of new year's six. I think matter all today. My ability to pull names is garbage right now. Um, (laughs) So currently in our S tier, in this order, and by the way, we only order the S tier, if I didn't say that already, all the other ones are just tiered. We do order the S tier though. S tier is currently Washington, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Florida State. Uh, I ha- Kyle did provide to me his S tier, and I will say this. He still has these four teams, but he reordered them. He did. Uh, do you disagree? Should should we be changing who's in the top four before we talk about the order? Should Florida State, should Oklahoma, should Washington, uh, all teams that struggled this weekend? Should they still be in the top four? I if we're basing it just on this season yes yeah we can't we can't yeah we can't reward georgia because they won it last year right i think that the top four should remain the top four now i don't necessarily agree with the order we can have that conversation but i don't necessarily i don't agree with the order two teams that you would move in are georgia and michigan correct i don't think either one of them are more deserving right now over washington ohio state oklahoma or florida state yeah, and and I do think that both Georgia and Michigan are very good football teams, but I also think I also know that it, they just have not played anybody. It's going to work itself out eventually. Yes, but yes. For now, that's for now, they deserve to get in. If the season ended today, and you asked the college football playoff committee to put their stuff in, that's who I would hope that they had in the, uh, the playoffs. Georgia's best win is against Kentucky. Michigan's best win is against. Is it Rutgers? At this it's point, Rutgers. yeah, five and two Rutgers rank Rutgers you cowards rank them. <laughs> so, yeah, I I think we all agree that these are the top four. And I think we all agree that last year or last week's order of Washington, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Florida State is no longer the order we want them in. I, I know that Kyle doesn't want that. I don't want that. You've already stated you don't want that. So let's reorder them. I I'm in agreement with what Kyle provided. He wants to move Ohio state to one. I fully agree. I think they have the two best wins uh, more than any of those other teams. Um, you could argue Washington or Oklahoma have the best win, 
uh, but they have nothing backing that up. So I think Ohio State is an easy number one right now. I would make an argument that Ohio State has the best win in regards to Penn State. I, I would agree with that. Um, you can yeah, maybe it's... argue that Washington beating Oregon is ahead of that, but I would disagree. Yeah, uh, but I will say this. Ohio State's the only team, especially undefeated, but probably even then, the only team with two signature wins this year. Right. Yeah. That's exactly I, Notre Dame. Well. Yeah. Notre Dame and Penn State are both signature wins. No one else has two signature wins. Washington has one signature win over Oregon. Oklahoma has one signature win over Texas. Florida State, we're still giving them a signature win over LSU, but honestly, that's and the Duke win now, which they have two losses now. So it's it's yeah, you, you could make that argument, but none of those wins are as good as Penn State. So no, or even I would so, argue better than the Notre Dame win. I I personally I I do want to move Florida State up to number two, even if the Duke win is questionable as far as how sig signature it is or isn't. I still want to say it's a pretty good win. Jared, I, I hate to be this guy, uh, but I agree. Okay. Uh, Kyle still has Washington at two, but I think we outvoted him. Um, so we will be bumping Florida state up to two. Um, and then there's the Oklahoma Washington question. And I'm just going to say this, and this is bad podcasting form. I'll just acknowledge that. I don't care. Like if I, I kind of want to put Washington at three only because Kyle had them at two. And I just, you know, maybe trying to wait. You know, his... they, they both struggled this week. Both of their wins against Oregon and Texas hold just about the same amount of weight for me. Washington was one last week, dropping them to threes. Fine. Okay. I mean, like the playoff committee, I kind of don't want to even consider it dropping them. Like, I, I don't want it to even like, it's almost like we're starting at a blank slate. You know what I mean? I right. really, yeah. that's the, one of the reasons why the AP is so garbage is because people don't want to drop a team who won. Okay, but then you can't reward teams. That's why you still That's have. So it's why Georgia's been number one all year because no one wants to drop them because they keep winning. But the only reason they're number one is because of what they did last year. And we shouldn't be considering what they did last year. This is why polls are bad. Right. I'm with you. Well, okay. Regardless, that's that's the top four. That's, that's the top pretty, four. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. So just to recap, S tier is number one, Ohio State, number two, Florida State, number three, Washington, number four, Oklahoma. A tier. Um, I want to keep Penn State in A tier. I don't believe we should be dropping them down to B. I feel obviously similar about Georgia and Michigan. They're obviously going to stay there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. North Carolina, I think. That's a that's a convert. Yeah. It could, if for no other reason than it was freaking Virginia. Yeah, it's if they would have played Florida State this week and lost or if they would have played even Miami or Clemson, Miami, so, so, someone with at least a pulse, you could make the argument to keep them at A, but it losing to Virginia, you, you, you got to drop down to B. And it is only their first loss. So they get a little bit of leeway with that. They don't have to drop all the way down to C, but yeah. Definitely down to B. Um, then we have Texas. our group of one loss teams. Penn State. Texas, Alabama. Oregon and Oregon State. Do you think any of them should drop out? Um. <sighs> I kind of don't think Oregon State is real, but I don't no. want to drop them out just because I kind of don't think they're real. That doesn't seem like a fair thing. So I feel and I, and I have a little bit for anyone who's just listening to this. I have a little bit of a space in between 
Georgia and Michigan, and then our one loss teams in Penn State, Texas, Alabama, Oregon, Oregon State. There's a, there's a little bit of an extra gap in there. So we almost have like a high A and a low A right the, now. The, thi- the thing with, um, with Oregon State is that their next three games are against Arizona, Colorado, and Stanford. So we're not going to know much about them there, but they end the season. Ar- Arizona, Arizona's sneaky good right now, though. They are. Uh, that's a uh, Pac-12 after dark, by the way. Uh, if any of, of you want to catch that on the Pac-12 network. Oh. Um, but they end the season at home to Washington and away to Oregon back to back on a right. Friday night. So we'll, we'll learn about them then. So they, until they lose, they can stay in A tier. Yeah. Um, so I think the teams that are still in A tier are fair to stay there. There are a couple teams that I think should move from B to A, though. Okay. I, I'm I'm willing to hear this. I think there's also some teams that should move from B to C, but let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, who 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 should move up into A tier from B tier in your opinion? I think the obvious one and the one that I would argue has to be done is Utah. They, yeah. they get a win over USC. Um, they're they only have one loss. You know, their their one loss was. To who was their loss to? It was to Oregon State, right? I think by like two touchdowns, but it was in September. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, were, they obviously they have some big, they have some big games coming up. They play Oregon this week. Um, so, so we'll, we'll learn, but I think for now they deserve to be an A tier. And Kyle agrees with you, by the way. He did note that he wanted. Utah and one other team moved from B to A. And the other team is Ole Miss, which yeah, which is also what Kyle said that. Yeah. Now you could if you want to make the argument to keep them in B, I would hear it. But if you're OK with it, I think A is fine for them. Again, all of these things are sort of uh, going to get worked out. Ole, Ole Miss is only losses to Bama. As of right, right now, um, my my so issue that, with Ole Miss like, at this point, maybe. though, is that when they're playing lesser teams, they're playing down to them, which if you're Oklahoma is one thing because you're still undefeated if you're Oklahoma. But if you're Ole Miss, it's like you should be beating a team like Auburn more handedly, I, I would say. Yeah, and, and unfortunately for Ole Miss, they they drew Georgia out of the East this year. So, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure they'll they'll stay in A tier for too long. But maybe they'll surprise uh, surprise us and uh, give us an upset. But I, I don't think any Georgia's flawed too. In. They it, it's possible. I mean, it's it's definitely possible that they could they could lose that game. That if so. if if the game goes over, Ole Miss will win. If the game goes under, Georgia will win. I would agree with that. But then again, we we did say that about the Penn State Ohio State game too. <laughs> we were wrong about that one. Hey, uh, that that's in the past. Akuna Matata. We what a wonderful <laughs> day. Yeah. Um, I don't think any other team should be jumping from B to A. Um, so if you want to have the B to C argument, what what, what you got? Uh Duke was fun while it lasted. Yeah, it's probably time to move Duke down to. Yeah. Should we be making the same argument with Tennessee? They only have two losses, but one of their losses is to Florida. Yeah. Florida's not good. Correct. But like how elite are we thinking B tier is? That's the question. Not super elite. Um, I think at a certain point, like in my mind, I'm tempted to leave A tier as just Georgia and Michigan and dump everyone down into B tier. But I, I think we're a week or two away from that. I feel like that's a that's a conversation that shouldn't be happening now, but might be a November conversation once a little bit more stuff is worked out. Um sure. because like in B tier right now is Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's got quote losses. unquote good loss to Ohio State is a good loss. 
you know, Ohio State beating Penn State helps solidify that even better as a good loss. However, their comeback win, and when I come back, I, I mean, like, their revindicating win uh, is against USC, who just lost again. Well, speaking of USC, uh, Jared, Kyle wants to drop USC to the M tier. How do you feel about that? It it might be right. <laughs> um, I because like you you got blown off the field by Notre Dame. You have all of the hype in the world. Your head coach is flirt is openly flirting with the NFL. Um, so is your quarterback. <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. The, Caleb Williams says he wants an ownership deal in whatever team picks him. And I I would say that that ownership should be transferred to Utah. So Utah Mm -hmm. should own stock in whatever NFL team drafts, drafts Caleb Williams. Um, It feels like a bit of an overreach to drop USC down to M at this point. I understand where he's coming from. USC appears to, yeah, I I don't see them holding up well against Washington or Oregon when those days come. Well, we'll listen. No one them almost giving them almost giving the game away against Colorado should be considered in this as well. That's fair. They did win that game, and no one thinks Caleb Williams is more mid than me. No one dislikes USC more in this Discord than I do. Can you be but their loss? Can you be more mid? Isn't that being no. like extra medium? <laughs> no, you can't. But well, that doesn't fit my narrative, so let me continue. Okay. Their losses still at the end of the day are to Notre Dame and to Utah, who are in our A and B tiers respectfully. Respectively. Respectively. Yes. I feel like you can't drop a team to M tier for that. I, I think, think that's if you want valid. To drop to the C tier, all, all for dropping them to the C tier. But M tier is a little much. I I tend to agree with you at, at this point in time. Um, I'm just double checking something real quick. Um, well, well, I guess we'll get to that. We'll get to that conversation when we when we get there. So yeah, I'm comfortable moving USC down into C tier. Um, the Vols, two losses. Um, you almost got to give them some respect for dominating Bama, but then they gave they it away. Yeah, I, I'm. I think I'm ready to. Just downgrade yeah. them down to C. Not they, they haven't done anything worthy of being M tiered. So here's here's what we're starting to run into now, though, Jared. Take yeah. a look at the A tier and take a look at the B tier. Maybe we should be dropping some teams from A to B. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to talk myself into it. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to be just Georgia and Michigan. But I think that there's like three or four teams that are in A tier that might even need to just be in B because A is looking a little not exclusive enough. It's it, it's it's a little sparse. By the way, I Tulane. I want to move Tulane up into B tier. I'm fine with that. Leave them with those other group of five teams, and it's a it's a good day. Good day for them. I would make the argument that Oregon State and Ole Miss can be with those other B-tier teams of Notre Dame, Louisville, and North Carolina. What are we basing that on? I I think that Oregon has at least looked the part. Um, They don't have necessarily a signature win. Ole Miss doesn't have a signature win at all. Oregon State doesn't really have – I mean, they beat Utah, I guess, So, and they both have one loss. Maybe Utah shouldn't even be up there either. Maybe you drop all three of those teams down. 
So if signature win is the criteria, what about Penn State? Well, but then you have to make the argument of what about Georgia and Michigan? But they're undefeated. Fair. So maybe you have to have a signature win to be up there. So Texas would stay. Alabama would stay. But that would be it, right? I think I mean, so. Who's Oregon's signature win? Uh, well, Utah, um, would, Utah has the win over USC, if you want to call that signature. And Oregon State has the win over Utah. <laughs> oh, boy. So. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, Hold on. Circles here. Okay. Um. Texas absolutely stays in A. Alabama absolutely stays in A. I kind of want to leave Penn State in A because their one loss is against our number one team Mm -hmm. in a game that they were in down to the wire. I think you can reasonably drop Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, and Ole Miss. Well, I kind of want to leave Oregon up there, too, because literally we can say the same thing about them that I just said about Penn State, except against Washington. So you want to drop Oregon, Utah, and Ole Miss? I think so. Oregon State, sorry. I, I yeah. feel like that's fair. I, I think it'll it'll start working itself out. Um, Utah, I think, is the... I think the argument that is made is that Utah would be the one team that I would want to keep in there. But the issue is Utah lost to a team that is also being dropped to B tier. And you you can't have Utah in A tier without having Oregon State there. I, I think that that looks good because now we have six teams, Georgia, Michigan, Texas, Alabama, Penn State, and Oregon in A tier. And then the group of five teams and six other teams in B tier. Yeah, this this feels right to me. Um, now, are there any teams that are in C tier that you'd move up to B? We already moved to lane up. Yep. Um, Houston had a good showing, but lost Arizona. I still think is a sneaky good team, but I'm not going to move them up into B tier just because they appear to at least be pretty fun. Um, Minnesota has a win, but that's not happening. UCLA had a win, but that's not happening. Um, Rutgers is still biggest... five and two on the season, which is great for Rutgers, but they they got demolished. Let's, by... let's take a look at Mis- let's take a look at Missouri. Missouri sure. is a, is a convo. Missouri is a convo. Missouri, who's their best win right now? Kentucky. Their one losses to LSU by 10. Yeah. They beat Kansas State. Is Kansas State good? Not really. It's not, not a signature win by any means. I mean, Kansas State is 5-2. and two. I don't care if they Kansas State's 5-2. or Kentucky... Yeah, I think they can stay in C tier for now. If, if they win next week... Well, they're off next week, but then they have Georgia. So... Yeah, that's a problem that'll sort itself out fairly quickly. I don't think um, besides UCLA, there's many other teams you'd want to move up. I agree. Um, I, I'm not. I'm just. I'm just looking over it, and I'm just not seeing anything. Later, sir. Later, sir. Um, yeah, I, I'm. Not, I'm not seeing it. I, I think that if that is the case, then there are. Three teams that I would like to nominate for the M tier. Okay. Number one, Michigan State. Would, did, did we ever have expectations for Michigan State? But. Okay. I'm taking their coaching situation into account. And they did just lose 49 to zero against who they claim to be their biggest rival. I, I know, but we can't just put teams in M tier because they're bad. There, there's a certain level so of how did LSU disappointment there? for by losing two games in September, okay. by being a team that was supposed to be the first or second team in the vaunted SEC West 
and then losing twice in September. Okay, that's can we, can we having do- expectations and failing spectacularly. Mm. I think that's what M tier is to me. Well, then my, my other two won't won't fit then either because uh, the other two that I had were uh, Mississippi State and Arkansas for playing to a seven to three game. That was one of the most sloppy games that I've ever seen. That 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 can be like an honorable like yeah. Week. I, I at least wanted to mention it. it yeah. Was pitiful. Yeah, the, the, we'll call that an like an honorable weekly M tier, but not 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 making it on the big board. I'm I'm happy with that then, as long as we're acknowledging that that was terrible football. Yeah. Cool. Then I I feel pretty good about this list. Then Jared, I'm glad A is a little more exclusive. And again, it's it's all going to work itself out anyways. Yeah, I would say so. Um. um yeah, I, I and I, and I do think if the criteria for A is just outside the playoffs then it's not Those are about the six teams that are just outside oh uh, yeah then yes you, you i mean you're correct it's it was i think a good move to take oregon state utah and Ole miss and, and bump them down uh because they don't feel just outside the playoffs to me um no they're the, on the next tier over yeah and the six well six plus four the 10 teams we have That's right it. now are i would say i would be surprised at this point Mm -hmm. if anyone outside of this group makes the playoffs i wouldn't be shocked don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'd be shocked i think there is and this is why b tier exists it is a possibility that notre dame at least sniffs the playoffs it is a possibility that Ole Miss maybe sniffs. I mean, Ole Miss can beat Georgia. If Ole Miss can beat Georgia, then you know they they're still going to have. Argument. At that point, they jump up into A for sure. Maybe even S tier. Well, the problem is, is that they don't control their own destiny in the SEC West. That's true, but honestly, that might even help them a little bit. If you end up eleven and well, one and not have to play in a conference championship game, that's a good point. You never know. Never know. Um, but I, I think the the idea is 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 right though is that obviously those teams in s tier control their own fate so do georgia and michigan texas alabama penn state and oregon need a little bit of help but for the most part can control their own destiny the teams in b tier are going to need a a good bit of help even oregon state utah and ole miss to uh to make the playoffs so i i like where we landed i do too i I think this is i think this is a good tier list uh m tier is still lsu clemson and and colorado I am interested to see if LSU can work their way out of M tier because they've played. I, I think it's possible. They play Bama. So win that game and you're, you're out of there. Yeah. Pretty, pretty easily. You yeah, I would even, say so. Might even have a chance to jump up into B tier if you win that game. Weirdly enough. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Um, All right. I think that's it. I think that's the show. Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, do you have any, uh, hey everyone come join the discord server. It's a lot of fun. You get to, uh, for $3 a month, you can watch us record these live. Um, but you don't need to pay anything to join the discord server. The discord server is free. Um, we all hang and chat, uh, all day on Saturday. Um, we have a social screen that everyone in the discord server is invited to, um, every week. Most of the time it's at night, but not always at night. Uh, when, when we watch the the games, but we did get together and watch the evening slate of games this week. Um, and had some fun endings. Yeah. The, but yeah, that's it. That's, that's the, the, that's the plug. I feel like doing, do you have anything in Austin's corner, Austin? Not really. Um, Ohio state did have a visit from an offensive tackle that we're interested in in 2025. So it's exciting. I know everyone, once offensive tackles added to uh, to the roster, especially that being one of our biggest problems right now, but that's 2025 so far away. You never you never know what you're going to get with with those kids. Um, uh, it was a good recruiting weekend. They had a ton of kids in. I'm scrolling through our recruiting channel, which you guys can see me scrolling through it on the Discord chat um, for the vo- for the video f- uh, folk. Um, yeah, Carter Lowe is someone uh, who, who you were talking about the 2025 tackle. Um, who I've had in the mock for as long as we've had a 2025 mock. Um, I, I think maybe more interesting 
is uh, Devin Sanchez, who is uh, getting a lot of Ohio State buzz, and Madden Ferriamo, who is uh, getting some Ohio State buzz coming out of this weekend. Um, which those are two guys who were not previously serious cons- uh, contenders as far as my mock goes. So that's, you know, I might have to make some adjustments there. So, you know, with the 2025 class, especially, we're still just sort of poking and figuring it out still. Uh, and then one other thing that I would like to touch on is that uh, Ohio State basketball actually had their first preseason exhibition game today as we're recording this yesterday or two days ago, as you guys are listening to this. And they they, they do tip off the season starting November 6th. That's so coming up real soon. Get to get some basketball fix in. So, yeah, as football season comes to an end, we get to look forward to some Ohio State basketball. So, well, look forward to is a strong word, but we get to watch some well, Ohio State basketball. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's not talk about football ending yet. I am not, I'm not mentally prepared for that. Um, we still got four right. more games, seven, eight, maybe. We'll see. Eight. Let's, let's, let's lean into eight. Eight of this. I, I think Ohio State, I honestly think right now Ohio State can hang with anybody. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Especially with the Ohio- defense. I mean, it, it, defenses can keep you in games more than offenses can because once you run into a good defense that can slow you down offensively, it, it becomes a lot tougher. But having a good defense, you can, I mean, when was the last time Ohio State scored 17 and 20? Uh, respectively against top tier opponents and was able to win the game. It's, it's been a long time. I mean, it, it, this team, and I've, I've seen a lot of people say it on social media, on boards, McCord is giving off a lot of uh, Krenzel vibes. I, maybe Krenzel won a title. I, exactly. And that, that and that's the argument that people are making. And by the way, yearly like 2002. And I, I mean, McCord is way better than he ever was. Yes. <laughs> Without question. Yes. But the the idea is still the same that this is um someone who as much as people want to complain and want to bitch about how he's played this year this is someone who can lead ohio state to a championship with the roster that's currently constructed so he's there's still he is not he is not through through his maturity through through his you know if you want to compare like eight starts of mccord versus eight starts of stroud he's not where stroud was but he is no. also playing very well. Um, you know, you have three years, excuse me, four years of Fields and Stroud, who are both NFL caliber. You know, both of them were worth top 10 draft picks. Um, and then if McCord is like just a first round quarterback, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, he's he's not a top ten quarterback. He might be like a late first, early second quarterback. Oh, oh okay, still pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. still still real good. Um, and I I think the most underrated part of his game that I don't think everyone enough people talk about. We Ohio State has played seven games. Is there? Any? Yes. I think yes. Seven. Kyle McCord has thrown one interception. Yeah, one. He does not turn the ball over. He he can, you know, I mean, he's, he's fumbled a couple of times, but some of those weren't his fault, you know, getting hit on the blind side or right. getting the ball strip sacked out. Like he's, he's going to take care of the ball. He's a great leader. I mean, you saw how everyone reacted whenever they beat Notre Dame there at the end, like everyone's bought into him being the quarterback. Like this is, this is a guy. I mean, I, I, I see you Ohio state fans. I, I, I see you complaining about him and listen, I'm not, again, like Jared just said, I'm not saying he's CJ Stroud. I'm not saying he's Justin Fields, but Ohio state can win a championship with, Kyle McCord is the quarterback. And by the way, if you gave Kyle McCord the offensive line that CJ Stroud had last year, yeah, Kyle McCord would be playing a lot better. Kyle McCord does not have the luxury of being able to lean on a run game. No, he doesn't have it. No, they can't. Do so it. even so, even as I say, he's not performing as well as CJ Stroud did to this point. Okay, CJ Stroud had a lot more at his disposal as far as having an offensive line and a running game in front of him. Now, Kyle McCord, on the other hand, does have the advantage of not having to win the game by scoring a million points. Yeah. So, you know, how much of that is a trade off? I don't know. But 
I, I'm sure Kyle McCord would take an offensive line if an offensive line was offered to him. He he also has the best version of Maserati Marv. So shout out that's, to Gus Johnson. That's true. Uh, but, you know, the field, Fields and Stroud weren't lacking for wide receivers either. Yeah. All right, Jared. Take that's the end home. of the show. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, right. Thanks for filling in. Um, tonight's ending artist is uh, Two Cow Garage, sort of a folk punk band out of uh, the Columbus area. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again to Cow Garage.